Hey everyone, I'm Adam. I'm a wedding photographer from Staffordshire in the UK and I recently moved from using Shootproof to now using PicTime as our main gallery supplier for my wedding photos. And I just wanted to talk to you all about the transition and a little bit about how to get started in PicTime and set everything up. So let's go. <laughs> Okay, so like why did I swap to pick time? So yeah, basically I swapped because of the hype. In the wedding photography community, the hype around pick time was just insane. And you know, last year I bit in the Black Friday deal. I didn't really buy anything else. I don't want really a Black Friday kind of person, but I was like, yeah, let's do it. And I transferred all my galleries over to pick time and just went for it. Mainly because I'd grown a bit bored of using Shootproof. Sort of the visuals hadn't really changed in the whole three to four years I've been using it. Yeah, some background bits and bobs had changed here and there, and they had acquired different, you know, CRM stuff. But to be honest, none of that really interested me. It was more about the visual experience, and you know, with pick time was here, and that's what it was all about. And obviously, the shop as well. So yeah, I jumped on, and you know, slowly been getting to grips with it over the last few months, and I absolutely love it. So yeah. Okay, so like the main differences. So how I would best describe it is that Shootproof is like a database, and pick time is like a photo gallery. Yeah, Shootproof is like that kind of like file system where you click into different files, call them albums on Shootproof, you know what I mean? And you can go in and there's a selection of photos there. Whereas PicTime sort of suits the kind of documentary kind of storytelling look. It starts from the beginning and goes to the end if that's how you choose to lay your photos out with the scenes function. So yeah, I suppose straight from the scrolling offset, I was like, like just naturally this feels right, if you know what I mean? So yeah, I really enjoyed that part of it. Okay, so a big part of using Shootproof for me was the sort of automated sort of bits and bobs to do with emails and that. Not so as automated as pick time is going to be, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But there were little things I used to do on there to go on more print sales, to go on more brand recognition and loads of other different bits and bobs. So I really wanted to carry all that over and I'm going to show you how I've done that now. Okay, so I think it's important to mention it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of scenario. So there will never be a gallery that sort of fits exactly what you want. And when, like me, you get used to using something like Shootproof and you move over to PickTime, there'll be stuff that PickTime doesn't do that Shootproof did. So it's really important to, you know, level your expectations and sort of see PickTime for the good of what it does do and then leave those things behind on Shootproof, but then also go on and new things on PickTime and sort of, yeah, make them your own in a way and go for it, yeah. Yo, so some of my favourite features on pick time, you know, the enlarged photos. So I'm very much a landscape sort of photographer in terms of landscape portrait, not landscape as in, you know, countryside and that, because shoot weddings. But yeah, I love to take photos in landscape. Here and there I introduce a portrait one, but very often on shoot proof, my gallery would just be like full landscape photos, full landscape photos, and they'd all just be like a big block and it wouldn't look very sort of like... I don't know, it's become a little bit like they all were as important as each other. Whereas obviously like, you know, a bride seeing a dad in the morning is way more important than a picture of a bouquet and things like that. So you want to sort of highlight them and with pick time you can sort of do the enlargement, which is really cool. Or you can make things smaller as they, as they scroll through the gallery. So I really love that. So another thing that I really love is like the shop is like integrated in a way. And when you're done scrolling, it's the same with any websites really. If you're creating a website and you scroll into the bottom and there's nothing at the end to say, hey, go here now, then it's pretty redundant really. And they're going to get to the end and they're just going to close the website. And PickTime knows that. So when they scroll that all the way down, it says at the bottom, do you want to share this with friends? You know, do you want to go to the shop? Do you want to do that? And the shop, when you go on it, it just inserts all their photos. It just makes it look like really professional and just really sort of easy to use in a way. Whereas when I was using Shootproof, it felt very database-y again. And you uploaded your own photos and it just sort of didn't really look that professional. And you know, considering the digital age we're in, it looked kind of basic to be honest. But yeah, PickTime Shop is by far one of its best selling features. So another thing I love on PickTime is the automation. I've only had a chance to sort of use a small scale at the moment and I did a little migration app yeah, I just did a quick free shipping and just sort of sent it out to everyone. But it's really, really great because you can choose when it's going to go out. You can choose how many emails you want to send. You can choose if you want to put banners in every gallery. You can choose if you want to insert little sort of tiles into the photo gallery to sort of say, hey, you know, 30% off at the moment, you know, straight while they is hot. And that's really cool. That is like sort of like how it's sort of like reminding people. And some people may not look at their emails, but may look at the gallery so it catches them as well. So yeah. The automation is by far amazing and I'm going to utilise that even further. 
You know, so another thing I love on pick time is like the like feature. So when you like stuff, it comes up as like a little heart shape in the corner, a bit like Facebook when it's got like the, you know, the one like next to it. And you know, that tallies up. So if you're letting access to your guests to the gallery, then they're all gonna like favorite, like the favorite photos as to go down. And you as like the bride or groom are gonna be able to see like what everyone's loving. And that's really cool. That is it. It's like more of an interactive kind of experience with your guests still. And you can sort of share those memories together in a way and see what other people are liking and loving. So yeah, that's awesome as well. Okay, so obviously I'd be amiss if I didn't talk about the fact that you can design your own albums on pick time and it doesn't need me involved. Like, that is incredible. That is so good. And, you know, you can use my suppliers, QT Albums, which is really, really amazing. And I love, love, love that feature. I'm still going to do my designs myself, but it's there for if anyone needs it. And that's awesome to me. I just love that having that option on there. It really sort of looks fantastic and works really great and makes it really intuitive that even, you know, the sort of less techno savvy kind of mums can work out and get, get their head around less techno savvy dads as well, you know, it doesn't have to be a certain sex. <laughs> Yo, so something else I love about pick time, which Shootproof also had, and I sort of started on Shootproof and I've moved it over to pick time now and it's going to take on a life of its own with the automation work, is pre-registration to my galleries. So my brides and or grooms, you know, they're really important to me and I want them to love the photos, but I also want the guests to love the photos because I'm going to take a lot of photos of the guests and it's really important to me that you know everyone I take a photograph of sees their own face in a photograph I know that sounds dead weird but like you know that person who I've taken the photograph of is going to love it the most you know because I've captured their personality I've made them look really cool I've made them look funny I've made them look you know emotional and they've maybe not seen themselves like that before so I really want to share that with them but if you just leave it up to the couple they're maybe going to share you know the password and that with a couple of people but it, they just don't and it was like one to five kind of people were logging into my galleries before I started doing this. So now what I do is basically within 72 hours I send over the sneak peeks to the couple at the same time they get a pre-registration link. So this pre-registration link then gets bounced around loads of WhatsApp groups with friends and stuff. They all register for the gallery. The bride and groom then within eight weeks see all the photos and they say oh these are amazing Adam. We've hidden a few that are maybe a bit too emotional, but feel free to release the gallery now. And I can then, you know, pass the power of the gallery over to them and show them who's pre-registered. So everyone who's pre-registered then, the bride and groom can then go through it. I say bride and groom, bride and or groom, can then go through and just check off everything, you know, and see, oh yeah, that's my friend, I'll let them in, I'll let them in. And all these people can then sort of like descend on the gallery and enjoy it. It increases chance for print sales, album sales, all that stuff. And it enables... You know, the bride and groom to relax and not have to worry about distributing their wedding photos and you know taking a cumbersome USB round to like their parents' house to watch it on the TV. No, like, you know, let's all just watch it from home and like send photos to each other afterwards, you know, and if we want to get like, you know, albums and stuff, we can look at them together because no one wants to sit through a 700 photo gallery, do they? You know, it's just intense, that is. So yeah, this is really awesome. And with the automation system as well, I'm going to be adding some offers, you know, for when their galleries actually break, when they go on, and, you know, people are going to get discounts like, within a certain amount of time. And it's really great because I will have, like, gathered all those email addresses up at the start, and then I'll be able to share these offers so that people can get great prints and enjoy the photos even more. So yeah, pre-registration, man. You've got to love it. And it's so engaging as well. I say, like, just to back up the sort of numbers thing, one to five were logging into my shoot proof galleries before I did this, and then now it's like 50, 70 people per wedding, you know, and considering like most people come in couples, that's like 140, 100 people, which is like you know, the average size of my weddings. So, yeah, everyone's looking at the photographs. It's amazing. Do it now. <laughs> so, we've talked about the differences between shoot proof and pick time, so now we're going to set up our pick time account and get everything sorted with that. So, let's do it. So, this is the dashboard page that your account will open like. Obviously, it'll be minus all this information if you've not actually uploaded any galleries yet. On the left, we can see we've got grayed out galleries. These are the ones that are offline at the moment. The black ones are online. So I only hold my galleries online for a year, but then sort of tend to keep them in the background just in case anyone wants the photos and I've still got them. It's easier to give them that way. Then we've got in the middle, I, th I assume this is like what photos are most popular, but I highly doubt this photo of a random bridesmaid has been the most downloaded photograph yet. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we've got this little graph of who's logging in. You know, we've got some nice high points there of when the galleries have been released. Uh, and then on the side, we've got workflow. So if someone's doing, like, uh, an album, 
then I'll send in a little email saying, can you pick 30 photos? And then this will all turn up here. We'll get into that in a bit. But yeah, store sales, I've not really done any sales yet. I'm not really bothered with that. I did a lot of sales on my shoot proof just before I left it. And I didn't want to bombard anyone with any more emails. So I thought, you know, ears in gently kind of thing. And then it's to show you who's visited your website, how many views your galleries have had in total. So going back, right, okay, so you're gonna to wanna to like set up a gallery straight away because you're so excited, but the best thing that you can do is just head straight to the settings at the bottom here. When you're using PicTime, don't just get don't don't bother with this back button. They need to remove this back button, it's completely ridiculous. Just use the pick time button. Because when you go into settings, press back, yeah, okay, oh it works out, it takes me back to the main menu. But when you go to settings, click on this, click on that, click on that, then it goes back through the menus that you clicked on, and it's just so annoying. So yeah. It's just not working how like other websites would normally work. So it really throws your mind and a few other people have said this to me as well. So yeah, head into settings, get all this personal detail information put in. Obviously I'm not gonna show you mine because that's a bit weird to put that on the internet. Plans and billing, I'm on the unlimited client gallery plan. The art gallery is basically if you were gonna sell like your photos as like landscapes and art and stuff you'd hang on your wall that a random would like that you've taken, you know, those kind of things, not like wedding photos. Client gallery is what you want for wedding photos. So get that set up. Then moving down to branded style, this is a dead easy setup. We've got a um, normal logo here, then we've got a white logo, so the white logo would appear on like photos, so it stands out when, you know, at the top of your gallery header. We've got favicon, which is a little icon in the search bar, or navigation bar. And then we've got email, website address, Instagram, Facebook, custom domain, get that set up. You don't want it to look like amateur, you want it to look like, you know, client.adamlowns.co.uk, not adamlownsphotography.pictime.com. It does you know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't fall off the tongue, does it? As uh, well as the other. Remove the pick time branding, get that gone. I want the gallery to open up on um, the client gallery portfolio. So for example, if we go to this, just go back to my website, and we hit this, so this is client gallery is linked on my website here, then it's gonna open up straight on this and we can go to weddings on here. If you migrate across, they'll load your weddings in all a weird order. So for example here, this wedding I shot two years ago, whereas this wedding I shot in December. So they're all over the place we are in. It's something they're apparently working to fix at the moment. So yeah, moving back to here, do not show live chat. I don't want people thinking that the live chat is associated with me. I know the live chat is a big thing for websites at the moment. People are loving it, but my service is super personal, so I don't want to introduce that. So yeah, uh, do, 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 do. so once we've done that, we can add a brand. So this is my only brand really, and I don't really want to use anything else. I don't have a different brand for like my family work or anything like that. This is the only thing that I use. So set up my watermark as well, and then that's done. That is dead easy. That is the easy bit. <laughs> so we've got store pricing then, gonna come back to that. We've got store settings. This is another easy one you can take off first. Tax handled by yourself, else they'll charge uh, a tax up front. Uh, payment collected by me, and then a set of PayPal. It's either PayPal or Stripe, or it might be another one, but yeah, they're the two for sort of UK people, and I find that there's sort of similar charge anyway. I'm gonna hold orders for two days, purely because I wanna check over any crops on canvases so that people don't order stuff and then get the wedding dress cropped off and then, you know, come to me with a complaint. Like, you know, loads of people used to do that on Street Proof. So we did still look at the crop, but they'd somehow like not understand it as well as we do, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna skip this for specific products, which are my high res downloads. So I don't want to approve them. I just want them to go straight to the couples if they've bought them. So that's only on some galleries anyway. And then I can set up self-fulfillment here. I have price change policy. So when Loxley Lab, who I use for my prints, put their prices up, my prices are gonna increase at the same amount as they're already sort of situated at. So that's really cool because you won't get caught out there. Moving now to preferences. So this bit on the right here, project templates, I'm gonna come back to in a bit. It's really important. It should actually have its own subcategory on the left here. And uh, then we've got uh, these little bits, which are really important. So I want an email address when they log in. Favorites are only visible to the photographer. So I like seeing who likes what. Uh, I'm not really sure if that did do the tally thing that I was on about earlier, but yeah. And then we've got block personal photos to use in the store. So I don't want mum adding some blurry picture of the dress to my photo book. It'll just look silly. And when they show their friends, it'll look like I did it. And yeah, the people to make assumptions and you get tarred with like that brush. I want this to look professional and really, really great. Yeah. So 
drag and drop uploader, that's a, a little uploader that will appear here, it's something you add to your desktop sort of startup menu and it just allows you know, um, photos to be loaded in the background rather than you have the web page open. So, and then there's a little activity report daily. I don't think I'd want to know daily what's going on in my calories, I'm not that obsessed. So yeah, then moving down to email packages, we can come back to that in a bit. Uh, integrations or some stuff on there, I've got a little testimonial set up of where to send people where I get my testimonials, and then storage, and that shows like how big each gallery is. So yeah, that's it for the settings basics. Now we're gonna get into the hard stuff. <laughs> okay, so the hard stuff. So store pricing, um, uh, preferences, and email packages. So the preferences, these project templates here are gonna be like, what's our templates for when we set up our gallery? So we're gonna to wanna to do them last then uh, store pricing or email packages first. So with the store pricing, pick time is amazing. It's got so many options, it's incredible. Like it's got too many options to be honest. So I've had to take so much of it away. So all this stuff that's grayed out, I've taken away. And I've either taken it away because I don't like it, or I've taken it away because the only people offering it are people that are you know, in Australia or the United States. And I don't want my packages coming from that far. You know, Having QT uh, is my album supplier, is a bit like sort of like it's a bit annoying to me but i've not found anyone else i'm i'm, I'm entirely happy with within the uk yeah i love kind of like short haul stuff so yeah everything else is in the uk except for my albums and a few like deco prints and stuff so when we click through we can everything at the start will be ticked and you can't add anything to this as self-fulfilled if you want to add self-fulfilled you have to go on this new product bit here but yeah <clears throat> when we go in here you know, I've only got a few ticks because I just like to think of it as a bit more of a curated thing rather than here's an infinite option of stuff, pick what you want. Because if we do that, no one's, they're going to take ages. So I prefer to just give them a limited option and say, you know, these are really cool. And most of it's in two by three ratio as well. So they don't have to crop it and it's easier. And I've gone through and done that and everything. I don't even do the fine art prints. I couldn't be bothered with them. Deckled, we've got gallery boards. So because there's a lot of shit to me first icon up here, if you want to check it out, I'd just rather have a drop ship to them. That's a, that's the joy of it, isn't it? Little shipping calculator there if you want to do it for yourself. Pricing markup, so you can mark things up by a certain percentage. There's a little tiered price in here, so you can say, oh, if they have two of these, I'll drop the price. Color correction, I know my photos are going to look, look good, like, and I've never had to color correct in the past. I'm sure the labs could do it better, but it's just what I've always done, so yeah. Canvases. Greetings cards, I used to do them myself, now I don't. My prices may be cheaper or higher than what you charge, that doesn't matter. I live in Stoke on Triton, Staffordshire. It's a completely different climate to where you're probably working from. Lay flat albums and final albums. Something weird, worth noting here is that uh, I use QT and all my stuff for albums is set up with QT on here. The final albums for QT are not actually called that on QT's website, so you won't actually know what you're selling because there's only a certain few photos. So if you type in on Google QT albums, pick time, then a page will come up and it'll like say like oh lay flat albums means area books or final albums means art books. So you can sort of work out in terms of if you're selling the same kind of product that you're selling it for, you know, a dearer price or the same price on here and not be undercutting yourself. So yeah, that's pricing and that takes a long time to set up. And up the top here, you can see there's two different ones. So I've just got two. I start them with the year and the date, so I know when they were set up. And uh, I've got one with digitals, one without. Dead simple, yeah. Because most of my couples pay for the digitals up front in terms of the cost, and then some I do a cheaper fee up front, but then charge them for the digitals. Normally I end up making more that way, but the client normally ends up feel like they've got the power in that situation they've got a cheaper cost up front it's a weird way of working but yeah it works for me with some couples so yeah <clears throat> if you want to add a new one edit price list up the top there and add more now i've just got these two and to create one you can just duplicate it so i created my 2020 december pricing duplicated it and then added my high res digitals it was that easy and if we go across here you can see high res digitals here so yeah that's pricing okay so email packages so Basically, all the emails that go out are all of the same sort of variety of these titles. You're not in here creating a bespoke email. You're just using what PickTime has already set up to do your own thing. So this is their default. You can't change this. So when I first came on, I was like clicking on it. And I was like, why can't I change it? Why can't I even view it? I mean, I saw this in the top corner, custom email packages. So you click on this and add a new one. So once again, year and date. So I know when I've created it. 
come in here and we can click on them and it takes us into them. So this uh, gallery is ready. I don't do that. I just send a link to my couples in a Gmail sort of like pre-made, you know, sheet. So I'm not going to use that one until I haven't edited it. But some of these are really cool. So photographer invited. I've gone through and edited. I've put like a bit of my personality into it. And for example, this one here, which is photographer invited, invited email, is where I'd invite my suppliers to view the photos. So I give all my suppliers free digitals, it enables them to use them and they tag me and all the stuff. And there's a certain set of guidelines with that. And I'm able to put this here. So the supplier usage guide put on the website here is where there's like loads of guidelines on, you know, you've got to at tag me on Instagram and Facebook. So that's preset up on there. And all I have to do with the gallery is then add an email and, and then send that off. It's dead, dead easy. So yeah, as I can say, I've added some personality into this in certain places. But yeah, you want to go through this, add personality. And in some cases, I've even said stuff like, oh, this is an automated email because I don't want people thinking that like it's me emailing them all the time. I just wanted to think it's part of the system. And I know it's sort of counterintuitive in terms of, you know, how pick time is meant to be used in terms of it's meant to just look like, you know, you're working 24 seven and you're the most amazing photographer. But I don't think that's fooling anyone, is it? Let's be honest. It's really sort of obvious what it is. So yeah, um, so the visitor access request one here. So this is with my uh, pre-registration. So they'll get an email saying, you know, oh, you've got people waiting to view the gallery. So yeah, just go through and set all these up and add in personality. Some of them you might not be sure what they mean. And you like, cause pick time doesn't really put a lot of wording in and it's only through the use that you'd be like, oh, that email gets sent when I click this button on the background. So if you want to know what one means, just give me a shout, I'm more happy to help. I don't want to, you know, get an email when a user has downloaded photographs, so I've wanted hard up on there. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I want to receive it when they've done proofing or user selections have been completed. So yeah, that is email packages. Done. Okay, so once we set all the settings up, that's when we can do our project templates. And that's why I say it's best left to last. So click on preferences like I've just done. And you can see I've got these set up here. Yours will just be a plus at the top at the start. So these are going to make my life a whole lot easier in the full on wedding season. when I can just come on here. Everything's pre set up within this gallery and I just can just click a wedding, you know, select the wedding template and just go straight in and off. So if we go on here, you know, it's really cool. Because she preferred we had like a couple of layouts and uh, I really like these ones, but I'm just using this one because it's all photo and no force kind of thing. And then we can set a color set at the bottom here change the background like if they're having like an autumnal wedding and they you know you use a really cool autumnal uh, you know where uh, yeah, kind of always that gallery like sort of header photo then you can sort of like change the color of it here which is really cool i really like that so yeah uh, that's mine a white logo i don't want my logo to look like that you know i want it to stand out coming down here we've got photos so we can preset up scenes here so if you're a person who delivers a whole gallery at once you want to set up like morning service reception maybe because it'll flow in sort of chronological order maybe you want to set up like you know group photos as a separate thing completely i don't know but i just want sneak peeks because that's what i'm going to send first and then eventually i'll delete the sneak peeks album and just do morning service reception in that order so heading downwards gallery setup so it's obviously a wedding dead easy it's a private gallery so she's going to show it on the portfolio like i said before online store we've got the price in there that we've already set up then we've got email package down the bottom here as well. We're not going to watermark these photos because they're all free to download, even for the guests. It's part of something I do. Client can download photographs. If we even try to stop that from happening, style high res, then it's going to say it's disabled in the store settings here, which is quite cool. I've picked time to sort of remind us of that. Down the bottom here, we can add music to play as a slideshow. I'm currently sort of hunting some royalty-free kind of music to add to there. And if we click on it, it says, you know, Pick Time's not responsible for you violating copyright. So just be careful with it uh, when you upload some Beatles music or something. So yeah, moving down, we've got automation. So if we want to add an automation from the start for a gallery, which I probably will do at one point, but I just, I'm still getting my head around everything else really. And automation, although I've delved into it, it's just not really top of my agenda at the moment because we're not anywhere near full wedding season with COVID and everything. So yeah, we've just clicked this. There's a little explore more apps, they call them apps. Uh, there's a gallery migration one I've used here. Obviously I'm not gonna use that for this, but yeah, we can just add them in there. So there's, um, there's a share. So all this is grayed out because it's all personal information. And then we've got allow users to pre-register. So this is, you know, when I wanna set my pre-registration and I'm just gonna approve that. But after the gallery has been delivered, after that eight weeks that I said before, we can go down here and we can select main client or photographer. So then the couple, you know, can then authorize people to come into the gallery, which is really cool. Don't select this one at the bottom 
do not sell like that, it's ridiculous. So that's basically um, going to just authorise anyone to get in that registers for the gallery and can complete access straight away. So then we've got workflow down the bottom here and we've got this set up already. So I've got Prime, Raw and Luxury, these are the albums I offer, which are Prime Book from QT, Blue Book from QT and Aria Book from QT. Obviously called different things. So these are selections that I've set up that I can then email over to the couple and I can say, hey guys, it's time to make selections for your Raw, raw album. And you know, it's gonna be 120 photos because of how many spreads it is. Send that over to them. It'll be that pre-written email that we've already set up dead easy and then all the photos they selected all appear there on the back end but yeah that's how i've set mine up there's that back button again that's going back but not actually back so then we've got the project templates all here to go and these are sort of the photography jobs that i tend to do and i don't really tend to do anything else if i did i would just make a custom one at the time so yeah project templates and all your settings now set up yay <laughs> Okay, so we're going to have a look at some client galleries that I've preset up already. So if you want to view all your client galleries, it's here, click, or just type in the name of who you want to search for here. So I'm going to go to Battles that I did the other day, shot this in December of 2020. It's a really great wedding. So it's got their own personal details at the top, how many sales, users that visit my website, downloads, those kind of things. As I say, I've not set up my automation and stuff yet, so I'm not too fussed about the sales of anything and these guys have ordered three albums with me already so you know just because it's not on here doesn't mean I'm not earning <laughs> so yeah so we've got a name and cover so set all that up and like I said before like I've matched that sort of colour to their sort of cover photo which is really nice the date of their wedding you know if you're moving stuff over from migrating from shoot proof to pick time there's a service that does that with pick time and I think it was like a dollar a gallery or something and it was even 50 cents in Black Friday, which was really good when I did it. But just be careful and ch make sure you check over everything because they missed a couple of galleries from me. And um, uh, there was a few dates, like, so say they got married on the 23rd of December, it was the 24th when they moved it over. I don't know what happened, but yeah, they changed it. But yeah, I checked over it and let them know and they just changed absolutely everything for me and they were really great. So yeah, we're only human after all, eh? <laughs> So yeah, going down, we've got photos. So this is a full gallery that's been done now. So as you can see, I've got morning service reception. I've not got the sneak peeks one anymore. And we can sort these at the top, you know, by date captured, file name, how many there are at the top there as well. So then gallery set up, got personal information on here that I'm obviously not gonna show you. Then everything else is pretty much the same. So automation. Not set up anything up there. There's a, this abandoned cart, it's really cool. So, if someone abandons like their cart, basically, so they put something in and then walk away from the website, it'll then send them an email to say, Hey, here's 30% off, why don't you buy it now? Sort of thing. So, then there's a uh, share, so obviously, personal information here that I'm not going to show you, but we can set up the bride and groom and or groom. So, it might be a same sex wedding, set them both up there. And then um, we've got their email address in there, and we can send them their room links to the gallery through here. I chose to like send it by myself. So if we do this, we get like a little mini link. So we need to send over, and I'll just put that in like a little uh, hyperlink, of, like click here on my uh, G Suite account. So then under photographer invited here, you see an email. This is a makeup artist that did the wedding. So I've sent her all scenes to download. So with that uh, email I mentioned before, and then now you can see the uh, pre registration request is me or her, like me or them to uh, let people in and then anyone who's not been let in yet is going to sit under here and uh, there's no one there because she's really good at letting people in so yeah moving down we've got workflow so as you can see here we've got these two albums so they can click to send selection for them but i don't want to because i've already sent these so they're having an album and i wanted to differentiate it from their parents album that they're also having for their parents so yeah that's why i've renamed them a little bit so it's a slight case where the you know project template had to be slightly altered to send it on and here we can um, see the user's favourites. So uh, this is, uh, I think, the uh, relative of the groom. And we can see what she's favourited. We can also send down uh, and download photos here. We can see what you the users have downloaded on the side here, which is really cool. And then dashboard at the end, like I said before. And that is how you view the kind of client sort of back-end gallery. And when you come to upload photos, you literally just click this, little drop-down comes up drop them all in and, and it goes. So let's actually have a look at this gallery. So this is a really awesome wedding this was. I really enjoyed it. So as you can see straight away, we just flow straight in. If, if you were a sort of a new person viewing it, you'd come up against a pre-registration page. So let's see if we can, no, no. 
but yeah, it, it comes up saying you, you haven't got access yet, basically. But yeah, you can see there's my website here. You know, recommend go to the website. It literally click that and it takes you to my website. There's morning, there's service reception, and then this is like a chapter jump. If you imagine like a DVD skipping scenes, this is what you're doing here. So down to the service, down to the reception, back up to morning. Dead easy to use. On the photos, we can make them bigger. We can make them smaller. We can hide them. And if we hide them, we'll get another selection at the top here that says hidden photos. Then they can heart them, you know, heart them, like them, use them use as well. You can email them to people, Facebook them, you know, put them in these selections. So I'm seeing this as the couple would see it, which is really cool. So download, or we can buy. So buy what, who knows, you know what I mean? But yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. So as you can scroll, look, it makes certain photos bigger, which looks fantastic. And I've obviously gone through and sort of said, yeah, I love that one and David, I'm going to make it really big. So yeah, as I said before, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So yeah, we finish off the gallery there and it says what's next. So share on Facebook, share gallery, shop, recommend. So it's sort of instructing them to do something and then it's showing them prints with stuff on. So straight away we can click here. Wow, this is cool. And we've got six by nine print. We can have it matte, we can have it gloss. It's showing us some examples at the top here. It's telling us how much it is. You know, I could you can send these to people as well. So I could send like, I could design an album on here or say, you know, say if a couple were saying to me on Instagram, oh, I love a canvas, I can go, oh, do you? I can get a canvas up on here, I can put a photo in it, and then I can send it to the couple. Like, and say, oh, I thought of you, I thought you might like this, and then they can go, oh, cool. So, yeah, it shows all the images at the bottom here if we want to select any others. It's really cool, just drag and drop them in, dead, dead easy. So, if we go to the shop on the main page, rather than through that little link at the bottom, it just got all the photos inserted, and these are, the, like, little ones that they've put in. And it just makes it look so much more professional, doesn't it? Let's be honest. Click through to albums. This is awesome. An automated album has been designed for you. For me? What? <laughs> Let's view it. Let's see what it is. 10 by 10. Let's go for it. Look. Look at that. Like, literally designed already. I mean, it looks shocking. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit disjointed, but yeah, for a couple who may struggle to do it, it's a really good little thing, and we can range, rearrange the photos, rearrange the pages, put empty pages in, change the cover type, you know, straight away it's telling me how much, you know, and it's showing me like, you know, level light with a nice little leaf next to it, it's just really like intuitive and it looks really awesome. Got a little price on the right here as well, and there's a little album guide, there's everything you need to know there, so yeah, as you can see it's awesome. So there's a little save designs button up at the top here for my account, which is really awesome. But yeah, that is basically the gallery. I just adore it, it's, it's just so useful. It's just great. It's fantastic. Catch you later, bye. Hey, I just wanted to touch on automation quickly. So I'm gonna click back to the big time uh, main button on the main page, and I'm gonna go into settings and, no, I'm not gonna go into settings, I'm gonna go into sales and automation above it. Anything they do that they're promoting all appear at the top here. So there's this Valentine's Day one at the moment because it's uh, February. So you can add that to your galleries. Anything that's going at the moment will appear here. So I've only got gallery migration. You can click into it. You can see sort of, you know, how many views it's had, how many people have clicked through to the gallery. This shows emails it's sending. So I've only sent one because there's no one to bombard people like I said before. But you can send one like three days before the end and then one at the end. And, I've noticed like when I've done email campaigns before that the one at the end always makes people buy stuff so make sure you do that. Then we can put a little text banner at the top of the page and we can do a little um, inserts into the uh, gallery feed as well which look really cool. But yeah it's really really awesome and we can set different discounts. We can pre-write the email so I wrote this email completely from scratch and inserted these little uh, links to what the discount value and what the code will be and those kind of things. So, and then I've just explained a little bit about, you know, the difference between shoot proof and the difference between this. Obviously, I'm not calling it shoot proof from big time, but yeah, just explaining that because it's a migration email. And uh, yeah, so down here on the side, as well as this automation, you'll find loads of other things like user activity. So you'll be able to see, you know, precisely how many people are downloading, who's buying this, who's buying that, you know, when, when people have got stuff in their cart, those kind of things. 
visitor email. So this will show me all the email links, all the emails uh, linked to that gallery. So for example, this is really cool because like some of these are like micro wedding days and they've already had 20 people, 40 people come in, which is really cool to view. Uh, testimonials, so you can set that up. Orders, like I say, I've only done the one. At the moment, it's just for a little high res digitals. It's abandoned cards, so this person's abandoned a cart, which is really cool. And this little sales report of what I've sold, billing history, it's dead, dead easy. But yeah, the automation thing is definitely worth getting your teeth into, and it's really, really easy. So if we could basically click more campaigns, we can do a general discount sort of automation here, or a rolling general coupon, or whatever. So if we click, say, you know, single use coupon, for example, it's then going to explain exactly how it all works, and we can apply this to like different galleries. But it's so so easy. We install the app and just go from there. Really, it's really really simple. So we can change the name of it. So we can change it to example. So then, if as you can see here, we can set up absolutely everything that's going to do so discount, and it's just like I showed you before with the migration. But here we can add in more banners, large banner, photo banner. That's one where it appears within the gallery. Store rotating banner at the top. You know you can do loads. I really, uh, you know, don't want mine to look too heavy, and I've seen examples of other people's galleries where you're scrolling through it and it's like, buy now, money off, get this now, you know, get it well at last, and I'm like. Like, are we looking at a photo gallery here or are you just trying to sell me stuff constantly? Do you know what I mean? So just be mindful of that. So we, this is uh, the email chain that we're going to send. So this is a three email chain. This is the announcement email, the first one that goes. There's a reminder one week before it ends and a reminder one day before it ends as well. So you can change all that. And the emails can all say different things when you click through to them. It's dead, dead easy. As you can see at the top here, there's a lot of campaign duration as well there. But yeah, that's it. Hit save and you're done. Pick time, mate. It's so good. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like and subscribe because I'm going to be, you know, posting so many more videos to this channel. And uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, I've got quite a few subscribers already, practically because I used to, about 14 years ago, I used to do videos for something else uh, in terms of uh, video games. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this and uh, catch you later. Bye.